Hey folks, and welcome to another exciting episode of Bridging the Gap. I hope you're doing fantastic wherever you are in the world today. I hope you have a phenomenal week. Welcome to the show that's designed to help teenagers and parents understand each other, grow together, and develop a more harmonious relationship in their family life, and ultimately makes for a happier home or show. I'm your host, John Morris, a psychologist and training artist, business guy, all that kind of stuff, helping you ultimately get from where you are to where you want to be with step-by-step -step teaching. Now, I'd be remiss of me if I didn't inform you that, unfortunately, Alicia um, has had some technical issues this morning, and uh, it's not looking like she's going to be on with us today. Fingers crossed, we will hope. Um, but if not, you've still got me, and hopefully we're going to have some fun with this um, short little show today. Uh, and it's going to be answering a really, really important question that I get asked all the time, which is, how do I cope with day-to-day -day life? Now, you'd be amazed at how many people today are just, you know, you know, they're running at 900 miles an hour, trying to do so many things left, right, and center. Um, and they're just trying to cope with life, literally. Um, before I dive into to all of that, I just want to tell you, you know, a little bit on how society has changed. We, I know we covered this a little bit like in last week's episode. But society and culture has changed to the point that there is far more demands um, typically placed upon all of us. Um, and especially, you know, I think you're a husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. They, you know, there the tends to be a lot more um, expected of them. You know, it used to be years ago, you would have one person for each job. So, for example, your wife would be the, the one who bore the children and she would stay at home and, and look after them. The husband would go out to work. You would have someone who was a friend that would be your confidant. You would have a doctor. You would have, you know, a, uh, uh, you know, wh whatever it might be, someone to help you with the cooking, someone to help you, you know, all these different things. And that's all change now because your significant other is expected to literally do all of those roles to be your accountant to be your blogger to be your confidant to be your lover to be your best friend to be you know your medical advisor in some cases to bear your children you know to to, to do whatever um and the the amount of things that have changed in the world now has put excess pressure um onto us and if you watch the show from yesterday which which answers the question you know is the school system failing our children or are we feel failing the school system or is our children failing the school system then you know you will get a, a clearer indication on how all of these pressures are playing out and impacting in every part of our life in in work in our um, educational system in our day-to-day -day lives all of that kind of stuff so let, let's examine the question shall we a little bit that that you know that, that we're here for today and it's a popular question for sure. Whenever I'm coaching clients, it doesn't matter where they are in the world, I get asked this a lot, which is, John, how do I just cope with day-to-day -day life? Now, if, if you've listened to any of my teaching, you know, for any period of time, you'll know that I always try, you know, looking at the uh, Aristotle view, as it were, you know, where you've got the two extremes, the positive and the negative, and you try to find the balance somewhere in the middle. Uh, I didn't know that that was actually Aristotle's view until recently. Uh, it actually uh, blew my mind when uh, when I found that out, that he he valued balance as much as I do, uh, which was really, really awesome. But it is a question I get asked at all, uh, you know, a, a lot of the time. It's, John, how do I cope with day-to-day -day life? And I always, you know, I, I kind of, you know, take off my glasses and, and, and I lean in and I say, well, here's a question that I want to pose to you. Do you just want to cope with day-to-day -day life or do you want to thrive? And they kind of look at me a little bit and uh, you can see the, the, the little mouse running around in the, in the gray matter, you know, and, and ask him again, like, do you want to cope with life or do you want to thrive in life? And more often than not, they'll come back and they'll say, well, you know, I, I think I want to thrive. And I'm like, that's the right answer. You know, why would you want a life less than, than what it could be? Uh, life is very, very short. Life is the equivalent, folks, of an of a old-fashioned pop-up that used to come up on uh, Windows Internet Explorer, uh, Win Windows Explorer. And, um, you know, it would pop up with all these different ads. It'd be like, you know, 10 or 15 ads that would, uh, would open up when you opened up your um, computer. And you'd close them all down. And that's somewhat like 
what life is. It's literally like a pop up one minute and it disappears the next. And what you find is, you know, when people start to, you know, start to process things, it's like, okay, why would I want a life that's less than, than what it could be? And, 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 and that's, that's a popular question they get. Why would I want a life that's less than what it could be? I was like, well, simple, because you've been conditioned that way. Rather than people turning around as I will, and I've said this in a number of shows, and say to you, I am a genius. Um, and with full confidence, with no doubt in my mind, um, a genius Earl Nightingale uh, basically described as someone who sees something but can see it in a different way than what it's intended for. Basically someone who can think outside of the box. And I love that definition. Um, you know, obviously I've, I've mastered the art of storytelling. That's a big part of our coaching program. I've mastered the art of art and, and history that goes along with it. Um, and I'm you know, fast developing um, you know, my own practice of psychology and philosophy and theology and, and business that comes from that as well. So, you know, I, I say that, but again, a lot of people will say to me, oh, I, I could never say that. I could never say that, John. I said, why? And they said, oh, because, you know, my, my husband wouldn't like that or my wife wouldn't like that or my son wouldn't like that. I was like, what has your positivity got to do with them? And they'll say, well, I, I, I don't know. I said, it hasn't got anything to do with that. How they see the world is up to them. How you choose to arrive in the world is up to you. Each morning you can get up and you can say, you know what, I'm going to arrive and I'm going to do a phenomenal job today. I am committed and it is my intention to do a phenomenal job today. Equally, you can arrive <laughs> with the opposite attitude, which says it is my intention to, you know, fill in the blank. So I know I got a little bit off, off track there, um, but I thought it was an important topic to, to explore a little bit with you because that is a question that I guess, you know, like I said, this is the way that people's brain often works. So when I get asked, you know, how can a person cope with day-to-day -day life? I say to them, you know, do you just want to cope or do you want to thrive? When they say I want to thrive, I say, okay, we've got to get the root cause, you know, of a lot of things. And the first thing that we'll do is, is a meditation. It's the, the positive affirmation meditation, which I did with Alicia and with Sean, um, right in the first episodes, you, you guys saw it. And, you know, it, it was literally a case of bang, 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 you know, fill with positive affirmations. Um, and then you can start to see them literally change. Now that just helps them create balance. That doesn't solve the problem. It helps them create balance. We have got to get to the root cause of what many around the world are struggling with. People will say that they are struggling with anxiety or they're struggling with loneliness or they're struggling with sadness or they're struggling with financial issues or worries. Have you noticed the one common denominator in all of this thing? What we're really struggling with and what they're really struggling with is themselves. They don't like themselves. You know, they've turned up in this body that may not look like they want it to or may not do what it wants, you know, what, what they want it to do, or may not earn the, the certain amount of money that they want to do. And then you explore it and you say, okay, well, what have you put into your body? You know, what kind of education have you put into your body, you know, that is going to help fix the financial issues? Oh, I could never do that because I'm on it. I'm on disability and it, and it would take away my disability. So oftentimes people can be happier being where they're at than actually thriving, which is very, very interesting. But the common denominator with anxiety, sadness, loneliness, uh, and worries, and all that kind of stuff, is it comes down to us. As human beings, we have got to learn how to handle an, um, uh, our emotions and our responses. You know, you, you've got a choice of being uh, intentional or reactionary. Reactionary basically means that bang, 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 bang goes on and you respond to everything that's happening under the sun intentional means no matter what happens around you, you stay on course, you stay on track. If you choose to respond to those different things, that's a different thing, rather than just reacting to them for the sake of doing that. I often find it incredible that, you know, so many people around the world seem to have this notion that life is against them, that people are against them, that society is against them, that their health is against them, that everything is against them. 
and you talk to them and you, and you listen to them and, and you know, you, you very quickly can become drained by these people. We decide how and whether or not to respond in a certain way. I decide that, you know, the divine spirit of God that created the heavens and the earth and everything that we see, that everything came from a thought is for me. And therefore that reflects my life because I'm aligning in positivity. Now, now I encourage you to do this at some point, just, just watch how people respond and how people react. You, you, they often, people say that you often can't judge a book by its cover. I disagree. You can judge a book by its, you might not be able to judge a book by its cover, but you can certainly get a good indication of what the content's going to be like. You just walk around your local street and you point out houses and you look in their driveway and, and you know, if, if, if the grass is unkept, for example, and, and, you know, six inches tall and the car is unwashed and the windows are filthy and there's toys everywhere and it looks disheveled and shabby, the chances are you can get a good clear picture of the people that live inside the house. Equally, if the house is nice and respectful and it's clean and it's peaceful and, you know, the windows are clean, the grass is clean, the stones are clean, the fence has been painted, all that kind of stuff, people have taken care of their possessions, then you're going to get a clear indication in your mind as to what that kind of person would look like, at least. Maybe not behave like, but certainly look like. I did an experiment a couple of weeks ago, and this is just a little sideline here. Uh, again, I have a few notes on the, on the side of the, the page. Um, so if you see me glancing over, it's, it's, it's to keep on point more than anything else. But I did a little experiment a couple of weeks ago, and I looked out of our uh, bedroom window. And I'd been listening to Earl Nightingale, and um, you know he was talking about if, if you live in a neighborhood, and, you know, the attitudes of people are nice and friendly and kind, then it's a good neighborhood. And it reflects it usually by how it looks, because again, the people that are good, nice, friendly and kind tend to look after their house a lot. They take pride in their appearance. You know, okay, you know, it's only a temporary thing, but they want to enjoy their home and they want to benefit their house for the benefit of the community. Equally, if you've got people that are angry and frustrated and, you know, miserable with everything and all they do is breed negativity. And that's what's going to reflect in the community. And I've seen this so many times. I've, I've worked in a number of different environments and a number of different communities uh, in my time as in, in ministry. And, you know, that was one of the things that I'd seen time and time and time again. People literally reflect the community. You know, and their thoughts are what literally has created the community. So, so many people, to get back to the original part, so many people in the world believe that the world is against them and their community is going to reflect that. It's going to, you know, you can only walk into these places and it's going to be filled with pain. The crazy thing is that we often choose our suffering, our own suffering more, more often than not. If somebody says something to me, um, and I'll, and I'll give you a prime example. Several years ago, someone said something to me that uh, was very, very unkind. Um, and it actually came from someone very close to me. It caused a whole big issue. And it took me a long time. This was before I'd gone through my transitions and, and my, my own learning and understanding and my own personal development. And it took me years to actually be able to forgive that person. Now, I'm in, I'm in the opposite because I really don't care all that much in terms of what other energies are, you know, people are going to put on me. I'm more concerned about what I'm doing and how I'm responding and how I'm showing up in the world. And I always find that interesting, you know, when, when people go through all these hurts and pains and then they're able, you know, at some point to be able to forgive, they actually realize how much time they spent wasted, literally wasted. Um, you know, in, in being angry and being frustrated and, and it takes time off your life, you know? And the sad thing is that we're so busy trying to fix other people that a lot of the time we never pay attention to ourselves, um, sometimes because it's easier. So 
coping with life, you know, should never ever be uh, a desire. It should never be a desire. Thriving in life should be a desire. And elevating your own mind to the point where you are able to say, I, I, I want to thrive. I want to grow and, and develop and build and, and, and be the best that I can be. Why? Well, because like I said earlier on, you know, your life is temporary. It's a temporary breath. Again, it's like that pop-up, you know, boing, hello, here I am, click, and there I go. You know, and, and that's the same for all of us. You know, at some point in, you know, I wish you a long life and I pray for that for you, but at some point in time, you are going to disappear. And, um, you know, I, I think it's really important that we learn to see life the correct way. And I'm just going to close with this. Uh, as I said, it's, it's going to be a short little teaching today. Um, it's one of the things, isn't it? When a person becomes more peaceful, they're not as energetic as, you know, and they're not moving around all over the place and, and everything. Um, but anyway, we often see life backwards. Um, and I think, like I said, you know, we're always looking for all of our things outside of ourselves, you know, we're looking for um, happiness outside of us. So we're looking for someone to fulfill our happiness from us and, or for us. And we're looking for someone to make us smile. We're looking for someone to feed us. We're looking for someone to, you know, bless us financially and make us prosperous and, and, and do all of these things. And that's not the case. It really isn't. And, and when I learned this, it was like, you know, you know, my mind just expanded. Being prosperous and being wealthy comes as a result of what's going on in here. It really does. I mean, you can go to work, you know, and you can go to work for many years, you'd be miserable. And you will only earn 15, 16, 17, 20, 25,000. You'll have a cap on it. Now, if you're really miserable and you're really angry and aggressive, well, you'll only be in that job a short period of time because no one will want to work with you. Being happy comes from within. And I'm not gonna to say too much on this right now because uh, it's, a, it's, it's a project that I'm keeping a little bit hush-hush, but I'm actually working on a brand new book series. And I'm really excited about this book. I really, really am. It's been a project of mine that's been in the works for the last maybe three or four years. And I'm really excited for it because it's writing itself. I'm just showing up and literally everything is just flowing. Um, I was talking to Alicia briefly the other day and I was telling her a little bit about it. And, uh, you know, I'd started it last, uh, last, Tuesday or something and now we're on you know Monday Tuesday again seven days later and already you know I'm 100 pages in and we're ready for the second half of the book um, and it'll make sense when you read it of course but I'm so excited and I'm so passionate about that but one thing I learned was certain characters that I was creating I was bringing them to life I was giving them life essentially I was being God and playing God within this amazing, amazing story. And I could feel their emotions when they hugged me, I could feel it. When they spoke to me, when we had these amazing encounters, I could feel it, I could genuinely feel it. And that's when I knew, I mean, I knew it in here, but when you know it in here, that happiness truly does come from within you. And when you learn that, when you, you know, stop just accepting life the way that it is and realize, hang on, I can actually create life in the way that I want it. I really can create life the way that I want it. And back to Aristotle, had that exact same uh, notion and that mindset. We become literally what we think about all the time. If you want to assume you know, the, uh, the role of something. So for example, if I, if I want to be a great wizard in the world of finance, 
well, what do you think I'm going to study? I'm going to study finance. I want to be a great psychologist. I want to help people around the world understand their blooming brain. I understood uh, PTSD this morning, which is post-traumatic stress disorder, sometimes known as post-traumatic stress syndrome. And I learned three key facts and three key symptoms of PTSD, which is something that I had struggled with several years ago. And I ticked every single one of the boxes and it gave me somewhat of, of confirmation that I was like, my goodness, I wasn't losing my mind at that time. This is a natural characteristic. The more that you understand, the more that you are gonna grow and the more you're gonna grow, the more you're gonna thrive. It's that simple. If you want to develop your life, you can begin the study, begin saying, you know, okay, I wanna be a psychologist or I wanna be a philosopher. I wanna develop my own business or whatever it is. And then every single thing you do must surround that area. If you want to get really good at business, then you need to learn marketing and you need to learn sales. I've spoke about that so many times on our, on our various shows. Um, coming up, we're going to be having a, a phenomenal interview with a sales legend um, very, very soon. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm not going to tell you any more than that. You got to watch the show to find out. Um, but literally you become what you think about all day long. And if you want to see change happen in your life, then rather than just sitting there saying, oh, this will never happen to me, that'll never happen to me. Well, you're gonna, you've got it right. It will never happen to you. Why will it never happen to you? Because you've already chosen that it'll never happen to you. As opposed to saying, you know what? Maybe I could do this. Even if you start with maybes, you know, maybe I could just, maybe I could learn business. Maybe I could speak to people that are in the world of business. There's enough groups out there for sure on it. Maybe I could do this. Maybe I could do that. But you got to get clear. And when you change your mindset, when you change your mindset from just how to cope with something to how to thrive in something, you will literally change your entire life you'll begin living a life that you really enjoy. It may take a little time for your, you know, external world to, uh, you know, reflect your new internal world, but it will, it has to. And there may be some difficult choices that you've got to make. There may be some people you've got in your life that, you know, have been friends with you up to a certain point in time, but now you're changing and you've got to say, look guys, you're either changing with me or I'm going it alone. You won't be alone for long because what will happen is you will start naturally attracting all these other people that are like-minded to you. I know this has happened. I've experienced it. I've seen it. And you will too. So rather than saying, you know, how do we cope with day-to-day -day life? I think the question now needs to be, how do we thrive with day-to-day -day life? And that is by changing our mindset, getting clear on who we want to be. And this doesn't matter what age you're at. I think as well, it also comes down to an awareness of ourselves that life is not out to get us. God is not out to get us. God is for us. The universe, if you want to call it the universe, divine spirit, source, whatever, is for us. And you can choose whether or not you accept that or not. You can choose, you say, no, not at all. But you'll remain in that place of negativity. Or you can actually say, well, I don't know at this point, but I'd like to think at least that something's for us. And there are going to be external things that happen all the time. Heck, as long as energy companies are still on this planet, they're always going to be messing things up for us. But it's how we choose to respond. Your thoughts are key. Develop them from how to cope to how to thrive. Have an awareness of yourself. And when you do, remember intentions versus reactions. When you just intend to do stuff, as opposed to, you know, just react. It's going to stop you from getting tossed around like the waves in the ocean. And you're going to thrive in an incredible way. Well, folks, that's all we are going to talk about today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Bridging the Gap. Hopefully, Alicia will be back with us next time, um, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. 
and we will have a tremendous amount of fun. And if you've got any questions for us about, you know, about this topic, please do feel free to get in touch. Drop us a message in the comment section below and or you can get in touch with us at battlesbeyondface.com where all of our podcasts are up on the website. Uh, we're making some changes to the website. So if you do have any issues trying to find it, just drop us a message and we'll be right there to help you. Um, and as always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. If you'd like to support the show on Patreon, you can at patreon.com forward slash mind, body and soul. And don't forget to check out this show on Friday, which will be our, I believe it's actually the last episode of this season's Mind, Body and Soul podcast. And we are closing out the show in a phenomenal, phenomenal way uh, with one of the biggest names in sports, American sports history. Um, and I think you're going to love it, um, especially if you're a fan of wrestling. So that, that'll be a, a big thing. Um, if you're a fan of wrestling, UFC and whatever else, you're going to love this show. And uh, until next time, take care. God bless. I have been your host, John Morris, the psychologist in training, helping you get from where you are to where you want to be. And this has been Bridging the Gap. Have an amazing day, guys. Take care.